For the following exercises, use the graph of f shown in figure 11. Find f of 0. So we need to uh, reinterpret this, right, uh, kind of in the English more or less. Um, now remember, the notation here is f of x will equal y, okay? that This is normal function notation. So what is inside the parentheses represents x, and what this thing will be equal to will represent y. So to restate this in another way, this would be say this would basically be saying find the value of y when x is equal to zero. Okay? So what I'm gonna do here, I'm gonna write it like this f of zero equals y. So the thing is, if we notice, right, we know the x value, it's zero, and what we don't know is we don't know the y value. So that's what we're looking for. All right, so we have to go to the graph and we have to identify where x is equal to zero. So we go here, bum, 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 and remember x is only equal to zero anywhere along this vertical line, right? This is where x is equal to zero, anywhere along that vertical line. Right? If you had to draw the line of x is equal to zero, you would draw literally a vertical line just like this. So now all we have to answer is what is the y value in which this line here intersects the function? And it looks like it intersects it right at three, right? Right at this particular point. So basically, another way you could do it, so that's that would be the answer three. Another way you could do it is just kind of think of ordered pairs, right? What's the ordered pair of this point right here? Well, the ordered pair of that point would be zero comma three. So what that's telling you is when x is zero, y is three. It's simple as that. So the answer here for the first one is going to be three. So to rewrite this, I guess, I'll erase that, and then we can write it three, right? You can also get rid of that highlight in there too. Well, I took the zero with it. Uh-oh, uh-oh, there we go. See, life lesson, never give up, never give up. And there you go. All right, so next one, uh, so let's erase some of this stuff on the graph here, okay. So the next one is going to be solve uh, f of x is equal to zero. So reinterpreting this, it's basically saying we know the y value is equal to zero, because remember this looks just like this. We know the y value now is equal to zero. The question now becomes what is then the x value? Okay, so we have to figure out where y is equal to zero. So y is equal to zero anywhere along this x-axis. I know that sounds counterintuitive, but remember, y is equal to zero along this entire line. What's the coordinate of this point? Negative one, zero. What's the coordinate of this? Negative two, zero. What's the coordinate of this? Negative three, zero. What's the coordinate of this point? Four, zero, right? If you notice, it's always zero for y. So that is the line y, equals equal, uh, y is equal to zero. So it turns out that at this particular point, this is the x value, two, when y is equal to zero. So if you had to even, let's say, think about that in coordinates, right? What's the coordinate of that point? Again, it would be two comma zero. What's the y value? Zero. What's the x value? Two. Boom, there's your answer. All right, there's your answer. It's that simple. So now, when I write my answer out over here, you can write it in a couple of, I mean, you could write it like this. F of two will be equal to zero. That's probably fine. Or you could just say x is equal to two. It doesn't matter, all right? Both should be fine. All right, now we're going to do this one. So this is now an inverse function. All an inverse function is, by the way, check out, we have a whole other playlist with uh, inverse functions and whatnot and trying to think through them, all right, how, how to think about them. So a very quick overview here is going to be an inverse function basically switches the x's and the y's. So for example, if this is my normal function notation, then... My inverse function notation will look just like this. We're going to switch the x's and the y's. You're going to just switch places. Okay? So now you just have to reinterpret this. All right? No longer does it mean this. Rather, it represents this. Now, don't get confused with the minus 1 on the top. Just pretend it doesn't even exist. All right? If you just wrote it like this, now don't, don't write it like this, but you can think about it like this. Okay? That little minus one just telling you it's, in, it's the inverse. Don't worry about it. All that's happening is the x's and the y's are switching. So now what this notation means 
or what this is asking of you in English now, it's going to, it's basically asking, what's the value of x, because we don't know what this is equal to, when the y value is zero? So you might say, oh, wait, wait a minute, Andrew, didn't we just answer that question over here? Yes, we did. <laughs> right? Yes, we did. We just answered that question, right? What's the x value when y is equal to zero now? The answer is two again. It's the same analysis. But this should kind of make sense. This should make sense. Watch. If this was my original, right? And this was the answer we got. So we had f of two is equal to zero. This represented x, that represented y. Then when I take the inverse function, that means my y value has to come on over inside the parentheses now, so the zero's in there. And then the x value moves to the other side, just like I mentioned. Two. Oh my goodness, look, there it is. <laughs> That's all, right? X is equal to two. You see how nice that is? Piece of cake, right? Now guess what's happening down here? It's the same thing as what we did in number one now, okay? Right? It's the same thing. So you can think about it that way, or let me show you how to do it in case we didn't, you didn't do number, you know, in case uh, you get to a test and you didn't do number one and you're like, oh no, he told me to just flip it and now I don't have, don't worry. All right? We can think about this the same exact way. So watch f of minus one, you're going to put the y in there, and this is going to be equal to x. So what this is saying is tell me what the, now I know this, this is an x in here, okay? But you want to think about it as a y, okay? You want to think about it this way. So this is really saying, what is the y value when x is equal to zero? Okay. So when x is zero, we have, remember this vertical line, this is the vertical line, x is equal to zero. And what's the value then of y? Boom, three. The same exact analysis as we did before. Okay. Remember, you think about it this way. I know the thing is written like this, but whenever you see this inverse notation, I want you to flip the x's and the y's in order to analyze it. It becomes so much easier. So what this becomes now is f minus one of then I'm gonna plug in now uh, three is equal to zero, right? This would be then the answer because the y value was three. So in other words, that's it. That's the answer. All right. So guys, thanks so much for tuning in. I appreciate it very much. Please help us out by subscribing. We appreciate it very much. And uh, check out some of our other videos. we got a whole, we got thousands of videos out there for you. All right. Just to try to get you through math class, <clears throat> physics class, chemistry class, and there's going to be more to come. Take care.